So, here we are. Just three motorcycles and uh, a crew of 16 people. Here I am sitting under this birthing tree. Such a positive, life-sustaining energy out here. Absolutely spectacular. Actually, we are officially entered uh, the ancient uh, Cherokee Nation. So we emerged from here. We pranced a little bit and back again. Ah, full of microphones. But I don't feel like talking anything, just feel like writing. So here we are, uh, a little bit of a trial run, close-up sites around here. Let's see what we can find and this is the very first step of a... a should be very intriguing two to three weeks across America, touching both traditional sites of Native American culture, which has been here for thousands of years, and also the making of modern United States of America. Let's see what we discover. Just three motorcycles and uh, a crew of sixteen, seventeen people. So, here we are. We've just taken off uh, from uh, Isha Institute of Inner Sciences and turned left on the Highway 8, riding towards uh, McMinnville. We are on a 55 mile uh, speed limit road, and the engine is waiting to roll but holding it at speed limit. <laughs> <laughs> right from childhood, our textbooks always said, Columbus discovered America. Well, till then it did not exist. Just that a few million people lived there. For anywhere between twenty to forty thousand years. Well, there are records of a Viking explorer, Leif Erikson. Who came to America in early eleventh century, at least four hundred years before Columbus did. They came here as explorers and naturally, trading on the basis of barter happened between them. They called this newfound region as Winland because a certain type of wild grapes was growing so abundantly in that region and they could make wine out of this grapes. So it was called Vinland. But the Native American indigenous people of this land 
have been here for anywhere between twelve to forty thousand years <laughs> You're the first one to catch me on this yeah, trip. Yeah, <laughs> wow, Wish me all the best. I'm glad Thank you're you. doing this. You Thanks. too. Just started. By the time we finish, we'll have corns growing in our backsides. Ten thousand miles. <laughs> Early settlers thought these were fortresses, but these are actually mounds used for various uh, religious and spiritual rituals. This old stone fort is uh, among the oldest, and there are some interesting aspects of uh, ceremonial entranceways and the ritual objects. Very interesting, we'll be exploring this quite a bit. Located between two uh, rivers, the Duck River and the Little Duck River, <laughs> the big one and the small one. All stone fort. <laughs> this is uh, rural Tennessee for you. Well. This is how the Midwest villages come. Space is the most important aspect of uh, this nation, this land. Enormous amount of space. Here we are uh, at McMinnville, birthing tree as it is known. It is also a trail marker, estimated to be over 200 year old tree, white oak, which is uh, been known to the Native American people as symbol of uh, strength and well-being. So it is believed that a whole lot of Native American women have delivered their babies here in the shelter of this tree. Very nice, wonderful feel to this tree. I don't think it is because of the children born, but I think they chose this tree to give birth because of such a positive, life-sustaining energy out here. There is such a beautiful fragrance here, this white oak, the way it has spread its arms out must have been a welcoming feel for a newborn child. And this tree also used as a place of assembly. Strategic meetings, deliverance of justice in many social ways. When settlers traveled from east to west, 
normally they would choose to leave uh, East Coast, let's say New England, which is where a lot of landings happen. By the time they got here, it would be September, like now it is, it's September. So as the temperatures start cooling down, as you go west, a whole lot of wagon trains would be would decide to stay on in this terrain. And because the legend of Indian women delivering healthy babies, strong children for the future came with this tree, many, many settlers who stayed here for long stretches of time to beat the winter before they continued their journey also delivered many babies. So here I am sitting under this birthing tree, <laughs> not born here of course, but I got here. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Are we done? Yeah, GPS is on. Yeah. Here we are. I don't know if the cameras are catching it. Absolutely spectacular uh, area. This one, we are cutting through the mountains, going uh, south on Triple One Highway. Beautiful, beautiful country out here. Uh, you will be seeing much of it today. Fantastic engineering out here. Both the roads and the machine. And of course me, well engineered. Wakon hatera musafir jayenge It's wonderful to be back on two wheels. Well, the speed limit itself is around, uh, you know, 75 miles per hour right now at just uh, 3200 or 3200 RPM. Actually, we are officially entered uh, the ancient uh, Cherokee Nation. We are next to a cattle farm. <laughs> well, they look healthy and nice, that means they will be slaughtered. It's a sad reality of human exploitation of every creature on the planet. Here we're crossing a railroad, open railroad, no rail railway gates are not manned here. <laughs> I wish we could do this in India that railway gates are not manned, but nobody gets killed by just behaving sensibly, this needs to happen. We are at the entrance of uh, Red Clay Historical Park.
right now, whatever happened here in the past. Painful as it is, not something that we can fix either this way or that way. But if we have the sense, we can fix the future. But if we have to fix the future, those who have been pained, those who have been anguished and vanquished and shamed, to treat them with compassion, to approach them with a bit of remorse so that we can fix the future. Well, the Trail of Tears uh, is 1830. After a painful disaster in 1837, the fire that the Cherokee Nation used to keep their sacred rituals going, they brought back the fire that went from eastern lands of Cherokee, which is here, to the western lands, which uh, became Oklahoma. They brought the fire back here in a symbolic way of coming back to their native lands. It's called the Blue Hole, it's supposed to have provided water for the council hall, which is right here. The Cherokee also believed metaphorically that beneath the Blue Hole is another world. This is a way to enter that world, but you need guidance to get there. The whole world out there as it is here, only the seasons are different from what it is here. The metaphor of this is that as we are living on the surface right now, all of us go under sometime. You emerged from here you pranced a little bit and back again. Here's the blue hole for you. Uh, this is a representation of uh, the Cherokee making a serious effort to adopt to European ways of life distinctly formed houses built with sitting or living areas, bedrooms and outer porch as there was a promise from the President of the United States that if you merge and mingle with us, if your blood runs in our veins, we can all live together, make the effort. So Cherokee is one of the tribes which really made a serious effort, though it didn't work out in the end for them, but they really made that effort to change their lifestyles and make it as much like settlers as possible. useful to make this trip successful. Not 
shaped in a factory or something? No, sir. No, no. Those are handmade in Tennessee. That's good. Let's pick this up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Y'all have a safe journey. Thank you. All of you, you want to drink, eat something? Everybody, I'm asking you, where, where's the next place? Is there something in the cars? We have snacks. Okay. Riding well, right? Yeah, we got set to go. This is Moccasin Bend. It's also a significant place uh, where people gathered of two different tribes, I think. Uh, the, both the Comanche and the other tribes which are further south to Chattanooga and Georgia, they all were assembled here and this is where uh, people were put together in stockades, like uh, cattle stockades and uh, without a flooring, without roof, just a stockade. And, uh, they say they were here for weeks, sometimes months before they could start their journey. Because of these delays and lack of organization, they ended up walking through a severe winter, which was a major part of the tragedy. Uh, is historical significance. It is uh, just beneath this bridge. The first few boats uh, which took the Cherokee from here as part of the removal happened. But unfortunately, terrible organization, unfortunate events of uh, failure of the boats and some of them had to go to pick up the soldiers, some mess up and because of that, most of them were made to walk over land, only about a thousand and odd went in the boats and the rest were made to walk, which killed nearly four thousand Cherokee. Time, we need to start quick. Starting out a bit late to Cumberland uh, Caves or Caverns, as they're known. A very large cave system here, very close to the center. Did the 
virus get into the cave or not yet? Here you have a, a sample of how small families made their own little whiskey to be sold around here. No better place than a cave to do this <laughs> never quit running as long as we've been coming in here. But we don't know where the water comes from, and we don't know where it goes in the cave. Look at that, so beautifully formed. Rocks are growing like human beings, trees. It takes approximately a hundred years to form a cubic inch. Cubic inch or uh, one inch of length? Cubic inch is what they, what they say. Stalagmites, stalactites are not worshipped as Vayambulingas. Mm -hmm. That is a, a nice formation which mm -hmm. comes in a specific form, okay. which may also be dripping water, all right, which freezes in the winter. But uh, these kind of stalagmites and stalagmites, this thing, are not worshipped. But because uh, it is a culture which is not a religious culture, which is a spiritual culture, the idea is to recognize the spirit of everything, animate and inanimate. It need not be in any shape. This rock also will be worshipped. This also will be worshipped because it's all in the Creator's hand. It doesn't matter what made you and what made this rock are not two different things. So because of that, you bow down, not because you think it is some divine form. In a way it is. Tell me what is not. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Please come and visit us sometime. Have breakfast yes. with us and go. Have <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> it's a very remote part of uh, rural Tennessee. <laughs> very different from anything. Wooden piece, huh? Pressure being low is really troubling. Okay, we're doing the railroad. Hold up, Jesse James. 
but nobody coming on the track. Uh, one of the major, major steps towards development of uh, the United States as a nation was the Trans-Pacific Railroad, that is from East Coast to West Coast. And uh, those who were going by from East Coast to towards the West in search of land and gold and whatever else, in search of fortune, the American dream as it was known, uh, were all on wagon trains. Wagon trains were risky, slow, and uh, subject to all kinds of attacks. So railroad was the real thing that it started moving people. So uh, there's a very beautiful, this thing uh, when, uh, I think it's a Lakota chief uh, who asks uh, the iron, iron horse is coming. How many white people do you think are going to come? So uh, the crazy horse, says, uh, as many as the stars, then they got the point that, you know, this is not going to stop, people are going to come. A big amount of population moved and uh, took the land and the gold and the mining and the variety of things which was the arterial line for the development of this nation at that time. Balaji, 42, 40. Oh, world of difference. I'm just struggling. No, just for that little, it was feeling like it's gone flat, you know, you get kind of suddenly feel the tire is gone totally flat. Yeah. Right through the history of humankind. There have been men of great power, great wealth and great spirit. Men of great spirit are always relevant because being of great spirit is not in comparison to weaker men, but of life itself. In this context, here we are in the ancient Cherokee nation, a history replete with men of great spirit. You cannot talk about history of America without taking into consideration the native people, the indigenous tribes and nations of this great continent that we today refer to as America. Yeah. Uh...
Oh. Uh-huh.